With sirens wailing and Patriot missiles firing, the people who live here may have good reason to be afraid that Saddam Hussein will not only continue to strike back, but strike here, punishing the country that provided a sheath for a now drawn U.S. sword. In Kuwait City, Gary Anthony Ramsey. The air assaults on the sea are still considered the jab and hook of this fight. And as the battle for Baghdad rages, there's still confidence among U.S.-led forces Today's actually not so bad. Visibility is about 10, maybe 20 feet. That's three or four car lengths if you're driving. You have to constantly wear something over your nose and mouth to keep from eating or even breathing it. Well, Frederica, investigators are focusing their attention on a space heater and the power strip it was plugged into in the basement. While the exact cause isn't known, everyone knows for sure that eight of the nine people who died were children. The oldest was seven, the youngest were two babies just six months old. The blaze got started about 11 p.m. yesterday and raged for a couple of hours before firefighters were able to get it under control. It burned primarily in the basement and on the first floor. In the Iraqi desert of Ramallah, beware the breath of a dragon. This beast wasn't born alone. Iraqi soldiers blew up 10 oil wells to cover their positions as the war started, leaving these monsters in their wake. It's a hot fire and uh, you need to have lots of water. At just over five feet tall, Sarah Akbar may not fit the appearance of a dragon slayer, but she is a member of the Kuwait fire team to put out the first of the oil well fires in Ramallah. Blaze is so hot, the hairs on your body will singe 200 feet away. The craziest thing can ever happen on the earth is to burn an oil well because this is energy. Energy that bleeds from Iraq's economy and damages the environment as smoke smudges across the sky. Each drop of oil that evaporates in a fiery volcano represents a resource that will never be recovered. Each damaged well coughs up about half a million dollars every single day. And by Iraqi poverty standards, that's enough to feed more than 70 families for an entire year. How important is fixing them and getting them repaired in a short period of time? It is, it is very important. Kuwait oil analyst Kamel Al-Harami says that modernization is also needed with repair. Both are crucial to stability for his neighbors to the north. They have to rebuild the, the country. Roads, hospitals, schools, you just name it. For the last 20, 20 years they haven't done anything. In the next 20 years when this conflict becomes history and tales of what happened here are told, maybe they'll also speak of the dragons slain in the desert. In the Ramela oil fields of southern Iraq, Gary Anthony Ramsey. Like the surf to a shoreline comes human suffering to Albania. Wave after wave after wave of Kosovar refugees continue to spill across the border. They run from an ocean of war in their own homeland that runs deep with bitterness and hate. Of course I was afraid, this woman says. The children were crying and they were shooting over our heads. The hardest part was not knowing when they were going to kill us. Half a million people with similar stories made it out of Kosovo alive, but scores did not. And for those who survived after being stripped of most of their legal documents by Serbian authorities, even holding on to your dignity here is tough, especially when you need the free hand to carry food to your family. They live hand to mouth, day to day, never knowing if they'll ever be able to go back across the border and home. The reason? They were born ethnic Albanians. A majority in the province of Kosovo, but a minority in the political system of Yugoslavia. That fact has been the source of contention, war and bloodshed now for more than 600 years. Police, policemen and kill it, many Albanians and say, they say, uh, you, uh, you must to go from Kosovo to Al Albania to come here, uh, notice your, your land. We must. This is not your land, a phrase many Albanians say they heard right before leaving behind the only world they ever knew. A common thread in this tapestry of misery and sorrow that now drapes our consciousness. 
But this isn't our land either. And though the pictures and stories horrify us, do you, the New Yorker, have a stake in the plight of these people? International affairs expert David Phillips says yes. Many New Yorkers came to this country fleeing persecution in the old country. We identify with people who are victims of crimes against humanity. If we don't deal with the kind of atrocities that we see occurring in Yugoslavia today, then the prospects for peace and security in the coming millennia are greatly reduced. There are New Yorkers, however, who are linked to the crisis with no ties at all to the region and with no political axis to grind. Some are here to make a difference while their relatives at home worry about their safety. We'll introduce you to them in my next report. Gary Anthony Ramsey.